Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Thank you. 
really good. I don't know if it's just that I got moved over into the different spots here, but or Ken installed a new sun up there, but <laughs> I can't see anybody, but we can hear you guys, so it sounds really good. morning. It's good to see you all here bright and early. I'm Janelle Mellish and if you've gotten a chance to look through your bulletin you probably see an addition that we've put in there on Wednesday nights and there's also an announcement um, for it but it's our new ministry called Solid Rock or Rock Solid. Um, and well it, it, it's a new thing that we're putting out there. It's not really that new. We've actually been doing it for about six months now and so it's such an amazing ministry and um, there, 
is actually six ladies that have just finished the process. And so we're planning on having our celebration dinner this Friday. And so I would like for us just to give them a round of applause for all the work and dedication that they put into it. Yes. It's such an amazing ministry, but um, we are starting another group up here um, in March, probably the third week in March. And so I want you to read through the announcement, kind of get the details. But the program is based... One of the staples of the program is what we call the serenity prayer. And you may be familiar with it, the first four lines, but it goes on. So I want to read it to you this morning to see if you can relate to me. The prayer for serenity. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, Taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. And that's what this program is all about. And I know the questions that you're going to have for me is, Janelle, what kind of issues do I have to have to be in this program? And I I wanted, to, I wanted to get this through to you this morning, that you don't have to have any certain kind of issues. Um, it, it can be the most hardcore issues, or it can be maybe you just want to deepen that relationship with God. And so I welcome all of you, and I encourage you, if you're interested, to please come and see me, um, and, and I can get you more details as it comes. And so please be praying for this ministry as well um, with me and, and supporting it. Um, I'm very excited about it. Also, we have um, just regular night, Wednesday nights, we have dinner, 5.30, it's the forum, and I'm not sure what we're having for dinner. Karen, do you know this week? Karen doesn't know either, Um, but I'm sure it's amazing, it always is, and so T-Bones on Pastor Ken, yes, be there, you won't want to miss that. (laughs) Um, And then the service is starting here at 6.30, as well as there's something for the kids, and, and rock solids going on at 6.30, and so there's tons of things going on on Wednesday nights, and so please make that a priority and come and spend that time with us. Monday nights, we have men's and ladies group as well as the young singles, and so if you're interested in that, that's at 7 o'clock, and child care is provided, so please put that on your calendars as well, and see, there was something else. The women's retreat, the women's ministry, I want to clarify, because we have a couple things in the bulletin that says the Sisterhood of Saints. It's not a club, it's all of you ladies out there, you just automatically bl- belong to the Sisterhood of Saints. And so um, it's not necessarily a club, but um, it's all of us ladies. And so we are getting together for the retreat, and there still is some spots open for that if you're interested. And that's $100, and so please sign up as soon as possible. And then we're also doing something on March 24th, and we're calling it Chopped. And all the details are in the bulletin, but we will be cooking together. And you don't have to be an f- amazing cook to come. In fact, if you're not a good cook at all, that's going to make it more fun. So please plan on that as well. And before we um, get, take the offering, I'd like to, you to know that we are having a slideshow of the Valentine's Banquet pictures as this next song plays. And so that's what those are. And, and um, I talked about that last week. That was an amazing thing. So let's go ahead and pray for the offering. And if you are a guest here today, I'd like to just say welcome. And this is our gift to you. Don't worry about the offering at all. And if you are a rather regular tither and participate in that blessing that we get from that. Um, You can do it here as well as online. And so let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you that you are an everlasting God, that your truth remains for eternity, and that we can just base our foundation on you. God, I just lift us all up today, and I just ask that wherever we are at, that you just meet us right there in in that moment. And God, I just lift up Pastor Ken as he prepares to bring this message to us, and that we just can take it and make it applicable to all of our lives. And I I ask that you bless this offering as it's about to be taken. And that you just um, guide us to use it according to your will for this ministry. And we pray all these things in your heavenly name. Amen.
something to prove Cause I have walked for miles and miles In that same pair of shoes You refuse forgiveness Like it's something to be earned Sometimes pain's the only way that we can learn You can never fall too hard so fast so far that you can't I get the uh, baby tiger up here? I dress like Jack Hanna today, so. Got some monkeys out there or anything like that? <laughs> Don't you think? I'm telling you, man, I got up, I, I got all this, I got this out, and my wife usually, I mean, I'm only 53, but she always makes sure I don't look too bad. And uh, I snuck out. I go, oh, we're going on safari today. <laughs> Sorry. So I got a kick out of it. She's going to see it. Anyways, let me give us a prayer. Heavenly Father, thanks so much for uh, great music. And really, only you can change us. Only the foot, across, foot of the cross can, can change us from the inside. And um, without you, Jesus, we would just be just, just chasing weasels throughout our life. And so I just ask God that uh, the remainder of this time we have together, we would just enjoy each other's company, that the Holy Spirit would move through each of our hearts, our souls, open up our, our, our lives to you, and we'd be uniquely different when we leave here today. And uh, so um, everybody that here, that's here needed to be here, and you knew that. And so, uh, uh, Lord, bless our hearts, bless their souls. We love you. We leave this request at the most level playing field there is, the foot of the cross. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. So uh, uh, before I, uh, I, I, I'm going to get going here. I, uh, many of you guys don't know, but we, we, we stream live every, uh, every week. We are, we're live throughout uh, on the web. 
srbcgf.org. And so uh, a lot of the people that are watching on the web, there's one couple that watches in their uh, kitchen, and they have a cigarette and a cup of coffee and go to church. I think this is the only church you can do that. But they're not here. Uh, and they always let me know uh, that they went, and, and I, I, I get a kick out of it. So uh, you know who you are. Good to see you this morning. And I got to give a shout out to my, my daughter's boyfriend. I met him yesterday down in Bozeman. For you uh, guys that have kids that are out of the house, <clears throat> and uh, you know, you, 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 as a husband and wife, you talk about them and you wonder if you, you did a good job. If you, you know, because you, you don't know. You're like, wow, did we do a good job? And uh, of course, they, you, you think you did. But, anyways, uh, 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 it, we went with uh, Chelsea down in Bozeman. She graduated in December and met her boyfriend, Ellis. So, Ellis, I hope you're watching and you mess up. We will come down there and mess you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that the rock like you, Chelsea. We'll take care of that for you. <clears throat> Man, it does not go along with what I'm saying at all. Um, I talked about the church last week and, and how the church is, when, there, when the local church is working right, there's nothing better than the local church. And it's, it's the hope of the world. I mean, the local church is the hope of the world. And a lot of people have run from the local church. They go, man, they have been so hurt, so messed, uh, messed up that they just go, I never want to go to church. You know, they, they walk in the door and they go, oh, what am I doing here? And there's, there's fear and there's, and, and what I've learned over the years is just, they hate to be judged. They hate to be criticized about everything in life. And what they've learned about churchy people is that's all they do is judge and criticize. And uh, we're not the judge. God is. And um, God gives you and I, you who have put your trust in the Lord, who have crossed the line of faith, as you've heard me say many times, that we have, you know, two tasks that he tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, verses 28 and 19, that is to go. That is to share God's love with your friends and family. To go. And then to make disciples. That is to teach them the word of God. I said last week, on, on Sunday, I said, if I could define maturity, I would say it's hair under your armpits. I love the little kids. They, they think it's funny. All right, it's not. All right, yeah, that's not it. But, you know, when you're like 10 or 11, you're going, I wonder if I'm ever going to get hair under my armpits. You know what I'm saying? You got to sweat something, you know, look a little older. Yeah, it doesn't work. Anyways, <clears throat> as a Christ follower, what does maturity look like? And I said, the deal is, is that maturity is not only you, do you know uh, the right thing to do? You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of people know what's right, but don't do it. Maturity is knowing what's right and then choosing to do what's right. Knowing what's right and then choosing to do what's right. And, and uh, Brian and I, we were talking about that later on. He goes, you know, I, I just thought of something else, Ken, about maturity. And he goes, you know, if, if we, we throw on... If we add to that, I could say that maturity is, because uh, in the book of Peter it says, young Christians just drink the milk of the word, you know, and you've got to be able to feed yourself. And isn't that true? As men and women of God, you've got to learn how to study to show yourself approved, a workman who's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You've got to know this. So you, you need to be able to read it on your own and grow up on your own, meaning you're able to get up out of bed, put your own clothes on, brush your teeth, Take a shower, smell good, look good, and go live. And that's the word of God. And so as you grow up as a Christ follower, you gotta, you got to do this yourself. You know, you come to church on Wednesdays or, and Sundays and whatever, or a small group, and you do that so you can go, man, how can I encourage you to continue to grow up, to mature, to, to be the man or the woman that God wants you to be so you can transform other people's lives? Because that's the local church. And nowhere in the Great Commission does it say to judge somebody for what they wear, for how they look. Nowhere. Matter of fact, let's look at a Great Commission. If you take your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 10. This is the most important commandment. And I love these verses. You know, it just it gives us 
Christianity. It gives us, this is what you are to look like as a Christ follower. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question, teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Question mark. Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say, and how do you read it? The man answered, and this is uh, found in the law in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. It says this, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind. So you must love the Lord your God with all your mind, will, and emotion. Your whole being. You know, that's how you are to love the Lord your God with, with all of you. You know, in the book of Revelation chapter 2, he writes to the church of Ephesus, and he says this to the church of Ephesus. He says, listen to the church of Ephesus, you know this word of God. You've studied it. You can argue with the best theologians out there, with the best narcissists out there, with the best uh, you know, the, the thinkers out there. But, he goes, you've lost one thing. He said, you've lost your first love. You know, when you love somebody, you know, fellows, when you met your wife and you fell in love, you know, and fireworks went off, you know, some of you guys, no, nah, I don't remember a thing. <laughs> that's what happened? Anyways, that's how I got into this mess? Anyways, uh, yeah, fireworks, you know, pow, 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 pow. And, and, you know, the passion, the, the, the drive you have is, well, that's that physical emotion. You're going, woohoo! And God says, in, 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 the, in the commands, he says, you are to, with all of yourself. For you jockey straps, your coaches tell you when you get on the field, on any playing field, whether it's an ice arena, on a mountain, in a court, on a court, on a mat, uh, you know, it, all good athletes, they leave it all on the field. You know, if you, can, you get off the field and you're still feeling good, you didn't give everything. You didn't give all mind, will, and emotion. And so I, I love the writers, and they go, you, that's how much you got to love God. All of you. All of you. And then he, he doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there. He, 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 he takes that, your love, your mind, will, and emotion for, the God, for God and how you're supposed to love God, which is very, uh, very intimate. And he says, and love your neighbor as yourself. The text says, Jesus says, right. And there's an exclamation part, mark uh, uh, behind right. And do this and you will live. Well, you know, the man was looking for a loophole. He was probably a lawyer. And he says, hold on. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Kid growing up in Chicago, that would have been me. We used to travel on vacation. Uh, I had three sisters and I always had a foster brother, so there were always five of us in some kind of station wagon in the 60s. And uh, we'd travel all over up to Wisconsin, Florida, the Carolinas, and, uh, uh, you know, and we'd sweat. We'd have a good time, and we'd, you know, we were like the ghetto family driving around America, but we had a good time. And I always saw these stickers on other cars that said, Good Sam. And I was like, who is that? Who's Good Sam? Nobody told me. You know, but eventually, in Sunday school, they talk about the Good Samaritan. And, uh, uh, and now I have an RV, and I, have, I proudly have a Good Sam sticker. Because you don't get them for being a Good Samaritan. You get them because you buy the stupid things. All right, man, you pay to have this bad boy on your RV. And then you just drive around looking for, for a tire to change or something like that. Right, honey? Isn't that what we do? All over America. Woo! You know, I hear something funny. We got pulled over in Ohio for driving erratically. What? You guys have no idea. We were not driving erratic at all. We're sipping margaritas. Just you know. We're sipping iced tea, driving our RV, and I get pulled over. This 
this cop, like, you know, he had diapers. They were just off him. He looked like, you know, man, you are one young dude. I, I thought about saying that, Eddie, but I didn't. So he, he puts his head in our window, and he's smelling. So what do you do? I'm a pastor. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you do? I'm a teacher. And I, All right, I need backup. I got a pastor and teacher. They're lying. They're drinking stuff, too. What do you got there? Iced tea. You know, you were swerving. I go, oh, I'm sorry. It's a big rig. I don't know. Remember that, honey? So funny. And uh, uh, eventually, he was a good Samaritan and said, I find nothing wrong with you two. Enjoy Montana. See you later. I'm like, wow. I didn't know. Maybe I was supposed to lead him to Jesus. I had no idea why he stopped me. You know what I'm saying? I wonder these things with people pulling on. So you have a bad marriage? I think I ask him stuff like that. She sounds like, quit asking questions. We just got to get down the road. <laughs> Did you have a bad childhood, young man? <laughs> so, the, so, so, you know, this, this, the smart aleck who understands the law, he says, okay, who's my neighbor? And for all of us this morning, he describes your neighbor, my neighbor. Jesus replies with the story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by, bands, by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By a chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the, the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. You get it? So the pastor comes up, goes, ooh, this guy's, you know, he's naked, he's beat up, he's bloody. Yeah, it doesn't look good, leaves. Parishioners come up, look down, eh, not good, leaves. Now, uh, the person who, especially if you're a, a Jew at this time, the most unlikely person, the half-breed, Jesus says this, Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two, uh, two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. Uh, if his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. He's, he's trying to teach you and I that uh, uh, you need to be merciful. You need to have mercy. God had mercy on us. You need to have mercy. And, and who's your neighbor? Your neighbor might be the most unpleasant person on the face of the earth. Your, your neighbor might be the guy that got beat up. <clears throat> There's a funny show on TV, I, I, and don't even ask me what channel it is. I just bump into it every now and then. And uh, they, they do, uh, uh, it's like, a, it's a reality thing. And uh, they were in a, a bar, restaurant, and this guy had his little kid with him, and he was just getting loaded. And then he was just took his kid, and they were going to drive away. And they were filming the reaction of the crowd. And some people in the crowd were just like, oh, I can't believe he's doing And do nothing. And other people would get up and, and say something, but very few. And I go, you know, for some reason, we have become a generation of no action. We just think things are going to just happen all on their own. Uh, for some reason, we have lost compassion the ability to, to jump in and help and be nice and do something. All Christians, we love to be saved. We love the first part of Ephesians 2, 8, 9. You know, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We love that. We can preach that until we're blue in the face. Oh, yeah, it's by faith. Believe in God. Go to heaven. Yeah. But then Ephesians 2, 10 says, and by the way, I have created you perfect. And I've created you for a reason. That is to do good. Because really what, what your friends want to see you as a man or a woman of God, they just want to see you be nice. They want to have a barbecue with you. They want to know that you love them. God says, hey, most important commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and 
in the same equal, if, if we went back to elementary school math, this would be the equal, not a greater than or a less than, but equal. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Because people are dying to be loved. Hey, as Christ followers, we love to be loved. We love acceptance. We, we thoroughly enjoy knowing that someone likes us, someone loves us, someone puts their arm around us, someone cares for us. My God, there's so many people around you that are, that are going through just bad stuff in their life. Um, the song they sang, at the foot of the cross, you can change who you are. And Janelle and I, uh, we get to talk a lot when we travel, and she was informing me, one of her friends that she teaches with, just going through some crazy stuff in his life, and, and she finally looked at him, and after saying, she, she, she just said, you need Jesus. And that's it. It's only at the foot of the cross where you're going to change. You know, it's nowhere, nobody, only the author and the finisher the giver of life is the only one that can rip into your soul and breathe life into it. And I, and I think about that. I thought about that whole life thing, you know. And I'm going, oh, wow, what is, what is God like when he, when he enters your life? And I, I was going through my life, what's that like? And I'm like, it's like sugar on cereal. I don't like sugarless cereal. Sorry, never have, never will. I thought in the, that my mom, we should design milk, already pre-sweetened milk for cereal. You know what I mean? Does anybody eat cereal anymore besides me? All right. Do you guys like, uh, you know, no, you all look healthy. I'm not. I look like Jack Hanna today, fat Jack Hanna. It's the way it is. I like sugar on my cereal. Now, I don't put sugar on my Frosted Flakes. There's plenty of sugar on Frosted Flakes. But I do like Frosted Flakes. I love Captain Crunch. Tear the roof of your mouth up, though, you know what I'm saying? It's like eating hot pizza. It just burns it up. You're just done for a long time. So I'm like, man, that's, that's Jesus. Jesus is like putting sugar in your life. Now, if you're Italian, you must like garlic. So it's like putting garlic in everything in your life. Which you smell bad, but you don't get sick because nobody talks here. You know what I'm saying? Hello, how are you? Oh, my God, what was that? A little spaghetti and a meatball. Uh, let's see, what else did I write? I, you know, I, I had to write these down because I, I thought they were good. Uh, oh, I, how many of you guys like wasabi? Wasabi! What is it? Oh, my gosh. First time I had wasabi, I'm at the teriyaki kitchen with my son. And he goes, now, Dad, that's kind of hot. I go, okay. And I like hot. Check out my wife. Sizzling. It's for you, baby. For you, baby. <laughs> hey, you, you do what you can. You know what I'm saying? You do what you can. So, uh, uh, so he watches me, and I take a scoop of wasabi, and then I put it in my mouth. I go, wow, this is flavorful. And then I go, then your brain says, wow, this is hot. It's like super duper uh, horseradish green hot stuff. And then my son would just smile. You know, yeah, dad, uh, told you it was hot. I'm like, whoo. So uh, uh, I'm like, God is like wasabi. Even just a little bit will spice up your life. You know, you don't need a whole spoonful. You, you, I don't know what will happen to you. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people like salt. It's just a mineral. You know, women, salt is merely a mineral. You don't be looking at me like that. You know, I'd be salting my steaks or whatever, and it's enough salt. Look over there. I think, uh, I think a young lady here at church said, she bought me uh, sea salt. She said, you can put the whole freaking bottle on it. It ain't going to hurt you. Ain't that right? Yeah, see? So I got sea salt now. Who cares? It's good for your heart. So when you die, the next person that day, they go, ooh, this guy must have lived in salt water. <laughs> anyway. Jesus is the only one that will change your life. And he 
adds to your life. People are afraid to put their trust in Jesus because they think what? They think, oh my goodness, if I believe in Jesus, oh, they're going to be like the only Christians they know who are critical, judgmental, boring people. And I'm telling you what, I've met some Christ followers that I'm like, yep, I'm not, I, I wouldn't join up with them. There's no way. So, um, you know, Jesus adds to their life and adds to our life. And so that's what you've got to go with. It's, it's, it's a good thing. So if you got your Bible, I, I'm going to, got a few more minutes, and I'd love for you to turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. If you notice in the bulletins, I said, uh, prove it. Because I think, you know, if you're not conscious that you are to love your neighbor, that you are to love God with your whole heart, whole soul, whole mind, and then love your neighbors, you won't. If you don't work towards something, if you don't have a goal, you won't hit it. One of my favorite authors, speakers, his name is Dr. Henry Cloud. And what he talks about leadership is many people have this wrong idea of leadership. They think when, you get the, when you're finally up in leadership uh, in, in, in a corporation, you know, in, as a pastor, wherever, that you sit on a beach, eat bonbons, and drink cold drinks. And you arrived. And it's so just the opposite. You have to want. How many of you guys saw Batman when you were a kid? All right. How many saw Batman when you weren't a kid? <laughs> when I saw Batman, they had a red phone. Uh, who was that dude that walked into the room? Commissioner Gordon. There you go. There's an old person. Sorry about that. Would walk into the room, and they'd pull off like one of those cake glasses, whoop, and then pick up a red phone. In leadership, the, the, you get the red phone. It, it doesn't get easier. It, it's crisis. You, you, you want to be able to deal with not little things, but huge, difficult problems. I mean, you know, I've gone to coffee with fellas that they think they could handle our deficit. And I go, call Obama. Say, hey, I know how to handle our b b b b b b billions of dollars worth of indebtedness. Uh, I found out this morning that they're going to shut the airports down. I don't know when, but they could. Do you guys hear about that? It's a good thing you guys from Canada drove, you know what I'm saying? They might shut the border down, and you're going to get stuck up there by Haver. Come on back. Haver does not have it. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. Take somebody off from Haver. Anyways. <laughs> Here we go. Prove it. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, now this is for us who love the Lord, who have put your, our trust in Christ, and not only to love our neighbors, and that includes everybody. You know, you guys have heard me say, we're all God's children. Some call him dad, some don't. Some call him dad, some don't. This is for us who call him dad. He says, if, is there any encouragement for belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing, agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together, one in mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Oh, he sets the bar. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privilege. He was he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God 
and died a criminal's death on a cross. And whenever you see the word therefore, always ask what's therefore, therefore. In conclusion, whatever. He says, therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Next thought, next transition. As Paul writes to the church of Philippi, he says this, Dear friends, and let me tell you, man, when, when Paul says friends, he means friends. He means I have been the battle with you. You are on my side. We're on the same page. We love each other. I will take a hit for you. You will take a hit for me. That's friends. So he says, dear friends, you always followed my instructions. And when I was with you, and now when I am away, it is even more important. And I love this. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Prove it. You love Jesus? You've crossed that line of faith? You say you, you love God and you go, I have the confidence of eternity. Do people around know that you love God by loving others, by loving them? Do they go, that guy is one of the nicest dudes around. He's helpful. He's grateful. He's pleasant. She's helpful. She's grateful. She's pleasant. I would love for that person to pray with me, to for, pray for me. I don't even know if I believe in God, but they got something. Well, it's Jesus. And he says, Work it out. Be conscious. You know, if you don't get up in the morning and go, I need to love my neighbor. Uh, you know, if there's an opportunity today to show God's grace, God's love, I want to take advantage of it. Somebody's eternity might be hanging in the balance. People are going through so much crazy stuff in their life. I walked into... Uh, Park Manor, uh, doing some contracting over there a little bit, and uh, not so much me, just talking with the, uh, the guy that kind of runs the show there. And I walk into his office, and, and he asked me to sit down. And he goes, Ken, I got cancer. They're operating me on, on me next week. And I just look across at his desk, and I go, Dale, do you mind if I have a prayer for you? He goes, no, not at all. I get up, close his door, and I have a pray for him, prayer for him. And uh, we don't talk any kind of business. I go, listen, bro, I will just be praying for you. Who knows? Who knows? But you know, everybody knows somebody that tragedy is right at their doorstep. You have God's grace, God's love. Just, just dish it out. Before I close in prayer, the band's going to come up and do a song, and then I'll, I'll close this up.
you guys were you guys were awesome. You know, this band here, that I come in and I'm like, I'm ready for game time. Because for you, you guys don't know, but every Sunday this is mega important. And I come in and they're still practicing. And I'm like, you're not supposed to practice on Sunday morning. And they just blow me off. They can sit down, get out of here. We're practicing. I apologize. You guys were, you guys were awesome. It's just, it's so good to lead us in some good music. So, uh, uh, you know, I had like a little attitude. Sorry. Forgive me. You guys were good. I really dug it. So, did you guys dig that? Yeah, every now and then. You know, the worst thing about Sunday morning is Satan just wants to mess you, doesn't he? You know, I fight it. It's like everything that can go wrong will happen on a Sunday morning. Really, because you get saved every Sunday. You know, when I was a kid, I got saved every Sunday because I was bad. And dear Jesus, come into my heart and had that whole, right on my bunk bed. Okay, I better pray that prayer. <laughs> uh, and now it's like, okay, I know that, but now the challenge is, as you know the word of God, as you guys grow up, is please do good. Love your neighbor. Learn how to love each other. Open your arms. Be gracious. Stand, why don't you? And if you're next to somebody who wasn't hacking all day, doesn't have a cold, join, join their hands. Gracious Lord, you are such a sovereign God. You, you know all the inward things that go in, in our hearts and all the things that have hurt us, that have stole life away, and, and you're the only one that can put that sweetness of life back in. And Father, we have neighbors, we have friends, there's people out there that, that need your sweetness. And sometimes we just look at them and we just keep going. God, may we be that good Samaritan that stops, gives them a few bucks, buys them a meal, changes a tire, just says a kind word that will breathe life into that vacant soul that just needs Jesus. So uh, thank you for your grace. Thank you for what you're going to do in each man and woman's life today. And uh, as we each go our separate ways, Lord, just may we be conscious of doing something good this week. We love you. Uh, we leave this at the most level playing field there is, the foot of the cross. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. See you next Sunday.